Good luck time. I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's digital minister. I'm really happy to be here virtually to share with you some thoughts around digital social innovation. Social innovation, or everyone's business with everyone's help, enabled us through a collective intelligence to counter the pandemic with no lockdown and counter the infodemic with no takedowns. In Taiwan, we have this forum called the PTT. Here we see that the PTT countered the pandemic by sounding off advanced warnings when in 2019 December, Dr. Li Wenliang's message from Wuhan that said, and I quote, there's seven new SARS cases in the Huanan seafood market gets triaged on the forum. The very next day, the first day of 2020, we started health inspections for all flight passengers coming in from Wuhan to Taiwan. Thanks to this public digital forum, with no shareholders or advertisers subsidized by Taiwan Academic Network fundings for the past 25 years. And so this enabled us to listen at scale. Of course, not everyone is familiar with digital forums, bulletin board systems. So in Taiwan, anyone can pick up the phone and call this toll-free number 1922 to contribute to collective intelligence. For example, last April, there was a young boy that called saying, hey, you're rationing our mask, but all I got was pink ones. All the boys in my class have pink masks. Uh, why don't you do something about it? Well, in our everyday 2 p.m. press conference, the very next day, all the medical officers were pink. And Minister Chen of Health and Welfare even said that Pink Panther was his childhood hero. And so the boy became the most hip boy in his class overnight, for only he has the color that the heroes wears, and the hero's hero wear. And through creative commons, all those mimetic pictures that pertains to collective intelligence get spread very quickly on the public web so that people can access the science and clarifications faster than they would conspiracy theories or rumors. It also enables a fair provision of resources without compromising human rights or privacy. In particular, when we made the mask rationing last February, there were more than 100 different tools co-developed with communities such as G0V or GovZero that look at all the government digital services that ends in something the GOV, the TW, changing an O to a zero, build a kind of shadow government fork the government into a different direction so that people can access the same information but with a much more friendly and accessible open access. So this picture you see shows the map that every pharmacy in Taiwan lists the real-time pharmacy stock of medical-grade masks. So people don't have to queue in vain in line, but rather they can navigate very quickly to the nearby pharmacy that still have the mask in stock. And we maximally trust the citizens with real-time open data updated every 30 seconds. And that enabled the entire society to co-develop better distribution mechanisms, pre-ordering, and so on. And the civic technologists in this May also co-created a contact tracing system so that when entering each and every venue, people can scan very quickly the QR code without unlocking the phone even and send an SMS. And that's it, like literally just three seconds. And each and every one can trust their telecom providers to never share this information with the government or multinational companies. These are stored within the telecom carriers for just 28 days. So out of around a quarter billion SMS sent automatically this way, only around one million gets audited by the contact tracers so that they can very quickly find the exposure contacts and reduce what used to take more than 24 hours in contact tracing, interviews and so on, automating it to less than 24 minutes. In addition to the fast and the fair, the fun, the memes, humor over rumor are also very important. For example, earlier in the conversation around physical distancing and mask use, there's a lot of different rumors, misinformation spread on the net. But because of this very cute spokesdog, the Zongchai, is a Shiba Inu, a official spokesdog for the Central Epidemic Command Center. So we see a lot of meme pictures, such as the one on the top left that says, when you're indoor, keep three Shiba Inus a length away from one another. When you're outdoor, keep two. Or on the bottom right, wear a mask to protect your own face against your own 
unwashed hands. And because this has a higher basic reproduction rate, a higher R value, than this information and conspiracy theories, it means that people have access to the scientific details in a fun manner that makes people vaccinated against the disinformation crisis. And we apply this not just to counter epidemic material, but also for digital assets, such as this model of our presidential office, the entire dictionary of Taiwan's national languages, also Creative Commons license, and even my own photo are often remixed to make hip hop songs or internet memes. Now, of course, it is not just about cultural products. It's not just about the output, the what of the policies. It's also about the why and the how of policy making. Ever since I became the digital minister in 2016, each and every lobbyist visit, journalist visit, and so on, and even most of the internal meetings that I chair, are published into the commons free of copyright, so that people can see. I've talked with around 6,500 people in around 1,600 sections and meetings, uh, and more than 300,000 paragraphs of speech. And this enables this co-creation of policies because people can very simply drop by my office, which is uh, the Social Innovation Lab, as you can see here, and book one hour of my time to talk on the record on how to improve the policies that we're still in the making. And because it's on the record, so people always lobby for the benefit of all humankind and even our next generations, simply because it will look pretty bad if they lobby for something that's only good for themselves at the expense of other people or future generations. It also enabled us to use assistive intelligence or AI to power such listening and skill conversations. This tool, Polis, enables us to visualize the feelings, the reflections of our friends and families, our social media friends, around public topics without going to polarization or flame wars or whatever. We first deployed this in 2015 when talking about the UberX phenomenon. Even though people differ on whether to call it a gig economy, a sharing economy, a platform economy, people do agree on the facts, the real-time open data. So we use this tool to listen and skill on people's feelings only. This step, often neglected in representative democracy, ensures that only the idea that takes care of people's feelings gets selected into ratification, into the real results of our regulatory co-creation. So this is like playing a pro-social social media game, not the anti-social one. This is pro-social because, for example, when you see some fellow's ideas like um, the passenger liability insurance is the most important, you can click agree and move toward me, or click disagree and move away from my avatar. And you can also contribute like a wiki, your own ideas and reflections for other people to vote on. But there is no reply button, so there is no room for trolls to grow. And Always after three weeks of conversation, we see this picture, a true reflection of our democratic plurality. People do disagree on a few things on the right. People can see that there are ideological differences, but people just table them because there's no reply button and concentrate it on the ideas that actually most of the neighbors agree with most of each other most of the time. It pertains to, for example, not undercutting existing meters, registration of vehicles, and uh, proper insurance. And so by concentrating on those good enough consensus, we successfully ratified and legalized a new multi-purpose taxi system so that not only Uber is a legal company now in Taiwan, the Q taxi, but it also enables local temples and churches to run its own fleet that serve the marginalized communities. And so this is still KPI, but it is not done in a top-down manner. Rather, this is done in a crowdsourced collective intelligence manner. And the people who participated in this dialogue simply gets a stronger vaccination against disinformation, biased stereotype speech, because they have considered, taken all the sides, and gradually formed this good enough consensus that unifies the contributions from the business sector, from the social sector, and from the government. 
So in the style of SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, I would say that our contribution in the digital is not to replace any particular human function or human intelligence, but to make sure that we can assist each other in uniting what used to be different perspectives into common ideas. And this, in concrete SDG terms, means 1717, effective partnership through 1718, reliable data in the style of 176, urban innovation. In 2016, when I was invited to become the country's first digital minister, the HR department asked me, OK, minister, there's never been a digital minister before. So what are you going to do? What's your job description? I'm like, oh, my job description is just the sustainable goal 1717, 1718, and 176. And the HR people are like, uh, minister, I don't think the citizens in Taiwan memorize those 169 sustainable goals um, in their minds. So I translated that into poetry, into a prayer, which is my job description. It goes like this. When we see the Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And whenever we hear that the singularity is near, well, let's always remember the plurality is here. Thank you for listening. Live long and prosper.